Okay, let's see what we have here. It's kind of a, an exciting day for me. Always getting prints back, even though it's we have the digital format these days, and you're only submitting what you already know you have. But um, but in this case, getting some photos back for this purpose will be to see the um, kind of the ink acceptance level of the the surfaces. Okay. All right. So I did an email recently. And in that email to our email mailing list, I mentioned that um, I just took, you know, there were some good um, cloud structures outside. And I hadn't gotten around to taking a lot of just generic cloud um, photos in a while. And um, I did so. And knowing what I know, which is kind of just a little bit about photo stamping from the, the experiments that I did earlier this year, um, I felt that the contrast between the darkest areas and the lightest areas, which are usually the clouds, um, if it was decreased a little bit, it kind of helps us in um, kind of the, um, the ability to stamp different things on them. So what I did on all of these photos, which were available for free on my Flickr site. What I've done is I've I've increased the um, the shadow areas. I've bumped them up a little bit. So just as you know, just as straight photographs, they're not terribly interesting because there's not you know the heavier contrast and definition um, within the uh, the space. But things like this with this you know hard. Um, contrasting kind of triangular area right here, this opening in the sky. Um, if that's darker, um, it's something that we really have to work around. Like I can't stamp, um, you know, like a like a chapel right over that. You know, that blue area right there would just show right through this area if I stamped it right there. So, I mean, I could stamp this in different areas like down here or something like that and it would be fine. But um, it's just easier and more malleable um, just with the lower contrast. Okay, now I've done some things on some of these things. Um, I've gotten rid of the blue and I've just made it um, monochromatic with uh, grayscale and that's so that we can add all kinds of different colors into this when we do, you know, when we stamp things out we can color it in uh, whatever direction we want to go. So anyways, that's the theory here. Now I've, I've done three prints of each, you know, just while I was at it, just so I wouldn't have to go back if I liked a, a print uh, to do it again. But I like the idea of just getting it here, um, you know, for a bunch of prints like this, you know, that would use up a lot of toner. So um, if you just know that you're going to be using, you know, quite a few of these, I think it's just best to uh, just upload it and go down and pick up some prints for a few cents each. All right, so anyways, so some different looks here. I've, I've zoomed into some of these fields, like right here, you know, where um, the entire cloud structure takes up the entire field. I've done um, some photographs where I've, you know, kind of zoom back so you can get some more of the definition and uh, some of the greater um, areas within um, a field of clouds, kind of some more amorphic ones. Now a lot of these, you know, when you're zooming in like this, there's not really a, an up or down either, so it can just go any way you want and you get that nice um, kind of texturing in whatever configuration you're doing it in. I mean, this could be low, could be high. I think this would be a good high one. I, it's probably like this or something like that. I don't know which way it was when I took the photo, but um, um, hmm. I thought I ordered three of all of these. Let me see. I don't know. It doesn't look like they are in order. Anyway, or was that? Anyways, I'll look at these again, but I don't know. Some of the real bright areas like that, um, it's open to um, some different coloring. I liked using um, alcohol pens. I'm looking through these for the first time right now, so bear with me. Uh, really, the top. 
top portion of it right there. Look at that nice um, kind of haze working in there. Kind of a little bit more defined like that. This one's, again, this one's a little bit harder to work around. Unless you're just stamping just pure silhouette on top of it. Maybe we'll try something like that on these ones. Um, oh, this is a great opening right here. But anyways, um, that Flickr gallery is in my uh, description area below these um, videos. If you just kind of click on the show more, it'll show the, uh, the links to the different uh, websites and uh, social media areas. And again, you can just download these for free. All right, so let's let's try some of these. Okay, so I want to test out. Let's go for this one right here. Let's go for a little bit of a higher contrast area because I really love applying some of my white pigment ink into these pieces. I feel that it kind of brings things around. Okay, now I just use this stamp a lot in a couple of recent testing videos. Let's do the same here. The Lakeside Cove is a really strong performer in terms of uh, being able to just about stamp over anything. It's, it's open. It's a little bit open in the rocks in terms of see-through, but it also has the strong silhouette shape of my trees. Little thing on the uh, Lakeside Cove, a lot of times I don't um, ink up this uh, textured area right in here. It's there for a reason um, if we have a darker area scene that we're wanting to do that in, but when it's lighter like that, I tend not to do this portion down here. Okay, so um, you can stamp this wherever you want. I'll just stamp it, I don't know, I'll just go right in the middle. And I'll do center. Um, center comp uh, know, dead center compositions right here dead center composing if you will I got kind of uh, addicted to uh, doing these um, photo stamping scenes um, when I found those uh, old prints okay <laughs> those old prints were that I did if you're familiar with this channel and you saw those um, photo stamping scenes where those prints were 20 years old so I'm just kind of curious if this whatever's on here I don't know if it's emulsion or I don't know I, I guess it's not emulsion these days with the digital prints oh okay that came out beautiful so as long as that doesn't spread out or something like that this paper right here it might have even given me a better print than that really old paper Okay, so this is just regular dye-based ink. It's not stays on or anything like that, or um, those types of inks, okay? And this should dry on here just fine. If it doesn't, I'll be surprised, okay? Because that's what I've been using all along. Okay, let's get a couple more prints on here. Like about like so. Yeah. Okay, I, I held down that first print for a really long time, too, because I just... I don't wasn't sure how the ink would transfer, but that looks exquisite. It almost looks better than glossy cardstock in some ways. Maybe because it it saps out the ink and dries so fast on this surface right here. Glossy, you know, dries pretty fast too, but um, I don't know, this, you know, the, the inks and toners that they use on these um, photo prints like this, it's designed to dry fairly quickly because you can't have these coming out of those machines like this and have that ink, you know, just taking a really long time to set up. I know, you know, they would stack all these and, it, you know, the whole thing would be stuck to each other. So it's supposed to dry pretty fast. And, okay, now let me hold this. I'm kind of holding up at an angle like this and, a you know, to see if I can see any little beads of ink. You know how that looks if you stamp on a glossy card stock and you stamp like a really solid image. There can be little beads of ink on there that are still, you know, taking time to set up, okay? So I don't see any of that going on. It's still a little bit moist right here where I just did my last impression, I can tell. 
but let's see here. It's still a little moist, okay? So it's still just a touch tacky. And I have a feeling that that will, I can see it just a touch of it on my finger. This is from something else. It's probably from a pad or something like that, but there's a little bit on my finger and it's just a touch tacky. Okay, now, from that first touch right here to right over here, um, I could tell that that second one was dry. So I'm guessing five minutes here for this to dry and uh, set up, uh, which isn't too bad at all. Okay, now I'm trying to think. I think I tried stamping pigment ink on this paper in the form of the versifying before. And I seem to recall that that one never dried. I came back to like a couple days later and picked it up, and I think it was still wet. I could be mistaken. I might be remembering incorrectly, but I think that was the case. Okay. Since I'm going to have to allow this to set up for a little bit before I go in with, um, I'm going to use some um, alcohol pens on this. I love alcohol pens for coloring. I mean, you can certainly use dye-based things. You can see how beautifully it um, applies. But the alcohol inks are a little bit more malleable. I can kind of move them around. You know how you can use a uh, like a blender pen with your alcohol inks. That works pretty good on here from what I've found in the past. All right, so there's some reeds. Those are some reeds down here. And let's put some overhanging tree limbs and something like that will allow me to use some of that um, white pigment ink in there later on, which is the thing that I really love to do as well. But anyways, a lot of times when I'm using dye-based uh, dye inks on glossy cardstock, I like to leave these kind of foreground images for uh, the, the last um, the last uh, process, application, whatever, to the page. But on this one right here, I'm just going to go with this first because first of all, again, I like to use this, you know, the Versify for my foregrounds a lot on Glossy. And another thing is if I use, you know, alcohol pens to color in here, sometimes the dye-based inks don't apply over the top of alcohol marks really very well at all because the alcohol kind of resists the water you know the water-based media of dye-based inks okay all right so stamping it just getting the composition right away like that all right those are some really crisp, beautiful impressions. Okay, I'm talking about just the impression quality. I like my designs as well, but um, just a super crisp. I'm looking at the tops of the reeds for image impression quality and evenness, too, of the um, inks on there. And that looks great. So I think we're talking about some pretty good... Um, stamping surface quality to this um, paper. It's nice and absorbent. It's absorbent enough to where it accepts the ink and it um, is not so absorbent that the imagery that we stamp on there becomes very dull looking from the surface absorbing too much ink. Okay, so it's I think everything is sitting up there it's right on the surface right there. And that's what that's what one of those things that we really want in our um, surface uh, paper. Okay, so let's try something else here while I'm at it, since I'm going to have to wait for a couple minutes for this to dry, anyways. I thought I would go with another um, scene. Let's try uh, let's try a nice blank slate right here. How about? Uh, I'll go for a little bit more, slightly more of an open scene. Maybe this one right here for my... I was thinking about this right here. 
Um, let's try this one, this chapel. I think maybe we can give this one. I don't know. It's kind of interesting working around existing kind of backgrounds because you have, you have to kind of work with them and consider, you know, there's a lot of a, or a little bit at least, consideration going into it. So these areas right here are really dark. And if I don't want those dark areas in my open image, then what I have to do is I have to configure this. You know, I have to place this in an area that I want it to go in. This one's the large one, so this is a pretty good example of working around something, okay? Trying to harmonize with it. I wonder if I should do this one in some greens too. Let me let me try to bring in a little bit of element of green into it. I don't know if this will show this or not. This is just a, another dye-based uh, ink marker. Okay, this one's my favorite Marvy brush marker types because the tip is so th wide and thick. But I'm coloring some of my trees. Maybe I can put this down in some of my grass. It's not going to look real green green because I'm just coloring right over the top of my black. But hopefully I can get kind of just a little slight gist of some color. This one's dark brown. I don't even have too many of these pens um, that I use. I just use a couple different colors just for a little hint of uh, some color. Like for example, I don't really need like a magenta pen or something like that. I'd probably never use it. Um, but things like browns and dark greens, you know, those are colors that, you know, you find in, uh, in, uh, out in nature a lot, you know, blues, browns, you know, those earthy kind of, uh, nature tones. All right, let's see how this stamps out. This is a, a big stamp. I always stand up to get center pressuring, and you can see I go from left, right, top, bottom, and I'm, again, I'm just better safe than sorry. I'm just kind of holding this down. These pens are a little bit dry, too. So, actually, I should store them upside down instead of right side up. Which I'll do right now, but I'm trying to allow most of the ink to transfer there. And it did. Okay, and we have that little bit of light in there, but look at that. Wouldn't that be like some nice heavenly light coming down, maybe? If I can do the rest of this uh, well, the impression quality looks pretty good in here. Um, where I had more ink, it looks a little bit better. Looks like I didn't have quite as much, but that ink, I can tell here from a technique standpoint, it really transfers over fast. So it really transferred over. I think I had a little bit of dust or something on that stamp too. This is my sedge filler, so I'm going in and filling in some extra grass textures, okay? So you can really, we can set this into the scene, like so, okay? Now I have some more of these tree um, shapes here in the form of tree clusters that matches with this scene here. Let me go get that right now. Okay, we have uh, the tree cluster. This one's tree cluster small. You can have uh, some closer to you, some farther back. You can use just the small portions of them if you want to, like over that horizon, you know. Either way, one or the other. Okay, Oops. this one right here. I can put some green in there too if I want. I mean, uh, if I want to too as well, I don't think I will. Let's just get this moving here because I'm kind of eager to um, apply some different colors in here. If you don't do something for a couple months, even though it's only been like a couple months, it feels like forever because <laughs> I've just moved on and done other types of scenes. So. Okay, so with, uh, oh, okay, I, I don't have any paper towels right here, so I'm just going to stamp this whole thing. I was going to take a paper towel and rip it and then mask this off and just stamp the top portion of this, but I'll just go like this. I'll just stamp it a little bit higher up. When you're stamping things higher up in terms of Western perspective, um, things that are generally higher up on the uh, 
the scene like that represent things that are farther back in the distance so you have a little bit of scale here you have a little bit of larger one going back smaller like that it's a little chapel here I don't know maybe I could have had a little path there leading to that too I didn't do that but that's all right Every time I stamp this one out like this, it reminds me of that little chapel in uh, Yosemite. Right in the, uh, right in the valley. Okay, something like that. And that in there. Alright, so, here's the thing. We've stamped this over oh boy let me see if i can find that same print here it'll be good to do it like a comparison was this it right here okay this is like one you have to look through this whole big pile here but okay so this is what this looks like right here okay is this the one? Oh wait yeah okay it goes like this okay so this is what it looks like right here um we see all this shade in here, right? And that's right in this area right here. It blends right in there. As dark as that kind of looks right there, that's kind of a 40% a gray scale, right? But when you look at it right here, it's almost completely undetectable because it's in the shadow portion, I think of the chapel. If I look real close, I'm not really sure, but see all this kind of, you know, this texturing that's going on in here. See this dark thing right here? So that's where the, it's going right into that tree right there. But it just becomes a part of the, uh, the overall lighting scheme, doesn't it? So, um, here's this dark portion right here. And look at it over here. So it's not as if I take a look in this whole section down here, this is what I'm getting at. It's not as if I look down here and I think, oh my god, look at all those, you know, cloud textures everywhere, how kind of strange it is to have that cloud in the grass or something like that. And with something like this one right here, this, it's not as if we think, oh, look at all those clouds in the rocks. It just becomes shadow, doesn't it? You know, to have all that kind of working down in this area. We certainly have it a little bit in the reflections like that. But it's really surprising. I mean, I haven't gone with like one with a really high contrast like that, where it's like white and blue right down the middle of that, but I probably wouldn't place my chapel right in that type of area. So, um, that being said, oh, let's try something like this too here. I don't know, isn't that fun stuff though? I am really, really pleased with the, um, the surface of this, too, in terms of um, how it's taking the ink, okay? Now, if anyone tries this out with their home inkjet printer, um, let me know how it goes, will you? You can put a comment in the, uh, the notes section below this video, or you can email me, stampscapes at gmail.com. Let me know how that goes. I have a feeling it would work pretty good, though, because this feels like how it was when I stamped on kind of home inkjet paper, photo paper, glossy photo paper. It'd probably work on matte. Oh, I, I got all glossy, you know, for these prints. I, I probably should have got some... Um, I think they call... I don't know if they call it matte. It might have been satin or something like that. I can't, I can't remember. There was some other option, but I didn't do that one. Um, okay, so let's let, allow these to dry a little bit. This one should be ready to go. It doesn't feel tacky to me. It's I'm not getting any kind of overprint. So just in the time we've been doing that other one, this one looks pretty good. Okay, so let me try some things here. Okay, now I have some different pens from um, both Shuttle Art and Marvy, Laplume Permanence. You can use your Copics or um, whatever, Dick Blick pens, I think. 
is it Michael's that has their own pens now too? Whatever, alcohol pens, you know. And I find that in terms of the characteristics of the actual media, you know, the barrels and tips are going to be different from brand to brand, but um, I find that the inks work fairly similarly. Just the tips are a little bit different. Like these are some really inexpensive. Okay, that's going to be too bright. <laughs> I like working with really pale colored, pale valued um, pens when I'm doing my um, ink applications here. And this is when I'm doing it, you know, die based on glossy cardstock as well. I like to work from light to dark. I find that it's just not such a, a jarring. Um, difference. This is kind of a warm gray. This is what's nice about some of these cheaper pens. These are like 50 cents, so I can get all kinds of gradations and maybe some ones that I normally wouldn't use so much, but since they're so cheap, you know, if I use them just really once in a while, it's still very inexpensive and I have them. Okay, so here's some cool gr grays here. This is a blue gray. Different gradations of uh, gray here. Okay, so, all right, I haven't done this for a while, but I'm just going in. This shows up more in the lighter areas. This is a very light gray, right? So it shows up in the lighter areas, where over here, the background is darker <laughs> than this color, so it's not going to show up. So it's a good way to start off. And what I'm doing is I'm just going in here and I'm reiterating the shadows, so... If there are shadows on the image like this, okay, you can see where there's the bottom sides of the rocks are darker than the top sides. What I'm doing is I'm just going in here and I'm reiterating that with some more tones. So it's like you're strengthening the shadows by filling them in a little bit. When I'm doing these designs and working on them, I have to define my um, shadows and dark areas with the use of tone, they call it stippling. But this is, you know, it's where it's just dots in a, in various concentrations, the more condensed it is, the darker it is, the more spread apart it is, the lighter it is, okay? It helps with everything like this, okay? So what I'm doing is in these concentrated areas, I'm giving myself a little more ink. I can, like on the water's edge here. I can kind of give it some tone like this. You can do all kinds of things. I'm just kind of developing my shadows right here, but you can think of it like, um, you know, colorizing um, photographs too, you know, when people used to go in and add some different colors. Ooh, this one's really dry here. Okay. Oh, okay. I have these things sitting up like this narrow side up, so this tip is really kind of dry. I need to store it down. Okay, I can see the chisel side is working fine. So I know there's a lot of ink in here. It's just kind of drier on the tip. I should store these on their sides, actually. Okay, so just going in here, this is a cool gray, just adding another gray. I don't know if you can even tell what I've done so far because the uh, changes are subtle. But when you start off light like that, it kind of gets you kind of into the swing of things and your um, ink applications um, as far as where to add the ink when you start light like that. Okay, now here's a blue, okay? Ooh, that's really quite light. Let me go ahead and add it in there just to get a little bit of a different hue in there. Okay, I'm going just right over that gray that I added in here going into the shadows. It doesn't sh stand out so much in the shadows, okay? But it is that color. It doesn't look like that, though, when you apply it over the top of um, other tones. This is what it looks like on white. But over the top of color and grayscale, it looks a little bit different, so get kind of the feel for it. I'm hitting my shadow areas. I'm starting off in the darker areas, but it's kind of giving a little bit of hue to those areas like that. So that shadow, here, let me do, see it, it kind of develops that shadow a little bit. There's a little bit more hue in there, okay? Isn't it? I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, 
in the shadows of the rocks, it develops them a little bit more. Now what I like to do is when I go in there with kind of a more obvious color, I come back into it with a lighter one and I kind of blend that out just like you would with a blender pen, right? Everyone seems to really like really super smooth kind of color transitions where you can't see any of the marks of the pen at all. I'm not that way. I like my pen and my like brush strokes, you know, if I'm working with a brush or something like that to be um, in there. But you can get some pretty, you know, blended, smooth applications like this. And plus, if you're working over these textures like this in the form of these rocks and whatnot and imagery, then it should just, you know, um, blend right into that textured background. Okay, here's a little bit of green, but see, I'm not going with a really dark green. It's a very pale green. This one's a melon, it's called. You put a little bit of green on some of your rocks, like it's... There's a little bit of warmth. Maybe there's a little bit of standing moss on these rocks. It's very subtle. In fact, I can barely see it right here. I might need to go darker. But I'll keep this green handy right here to do the blending. Let me take a look and see what different pens I have. Even though I have like a hundred different pens, it seems like I'm still... Uh, I could use, you know, a couple other colors here. Okay, this one's a pale green. Yeah, it's kind of a warm green though. Pretty interesting. It's kind of that mossy color, right? Doesn't it kind of um, add a little bit more kind of visual interest to it? Going with that, let's go back to the melon. Well, it's still kind of malleable. I think if you let that ink set for a while, maybe it becomes a little bit more set. I do think you can kind of put it back into solution and just go over it again, but I wouldn't wait. You know, I wouldn't wait a month or something like that to do that, or I don't know, even a couple of days, but see that right there? Um, in the rocks, it's just kind of changing it a little bit. There's more kind of character to it. And I mean, this is really easy stuff, right? It's not like, oh my gosh, I, you know, worried about doing it. You just go in there with your, your lighter tones, and we're working very incrementally, maybe too incremental. Maybe I'm being too um, safe here. Okay, because you can barely see anything that's being applied sometimes. But that's the easy way to work, right? It's very, very forgiving. It's not like you're taking these big, gigantic leaps of uh, hue and value. I mean, you certainly could. You can be a lot more bold and daring than I am. But you don't have to be, and uh, things can kind of just develop nice and easy and smoothly and whatnot, safely, maybe. Maybe that's not a good word in art, being safe, you know. I do believe people should be daring, but I like my applications to be somewhat uh, uh, controlled. I need to break out of that, though, too, sometimes. Okay, so you can add some of this little green down to the water. You know, if water is kind of reflective. You can kind of put it down there as well and have it reflecting in the water. I don't know if there would really be so much grassy moss in this type of area. There's probably snow and this pine forest sometime. I don't know. Okay, so anyways, we have something like that. In those rocks, um, let me see if some things are standing out to me. I think maybe even some further definition of the shadows down here with a little bit of a different color. It's almost that color of that sky right there, so we're kind of introducing some of that color, sky color down here. It's kind of reiterating that color in the sky. You can put it down here if you want to. Reflecting down there in the water, who knows? You can put some on those rocks. I like to put some of that color of the sky into my objects as well. I think that's really fun. All right, so easy enough. I think that looks pretty good. And certainly taking pictures of real 
skies like that, it creates a kind of a, an instant kind of anchor in terms of a very familiar textures and whatnot. We're all familiar with clouds and whatnot, even though, you know, some people tell me that after they start kind of scenic stamping, they become more observant in nature, which is always really cool. Okay, so grass down here, and we have some trees. We have some kind of uh, um, uh, deciduous trees. Maybe they're in fall tones. I'm adding some of this. This is a uh, apricot. It's a very kind of pale, warm tone. Let me add this in the chapel as well. Okay. By doing these common colors, you can kind of give a little bit of continuity to your surfaces down here. I can add it under my shadows, under the trees. Um, here's that melon, adding it into the grass. Okay. I don't want to color everything out because I want to leave some of that light down there, okay? So just like when we do what we do with um, uh, cardstock and starting with a blank piece of paper, I like to leave my lighter areas down here just to give um, some reflective quality to the light that's being cast. In this case, it's the clouds and the sky and whatnot. All right, so here's a pretty bright green. This is getting a little bit more daring here, okay, but I don't like it as is like that. It's just, it's too bright and stands out a little bit too much. So we're just going to come back in with either the melon or that apricot and just kind of blend that out a little bit. And what we're doing is we're kind of spreading it out too. So it's like you're diluting it and kind of spreading it out. And when I start using a lot of alcohol inks like this on this paper, I can really feel the um, paper getting sticky. You know, it's that sticky kind of alcohol ink buildup. Which isn't bad. I mean, it'll dry. Okay, I'm actually putting some of this green, this melon, into the chapel, too. It doesn't read as green, but again, it just kind of gives a little bit of continuity to the piece. Actually, I can see a little bit of that green in there. Let's see, let's hit it with a cool gray. Okay, like that. I'll just kind of have a little bit less green. So you have, if something, if a building is white, it would be reflective of some of the colors around it. So it's good to put a little bit of that color in there. Otherwise you have all these different little areas that are kind of unrelated in terms of their color schemes and that doesn't lend to continuity. Sunlight yellow, wow. Okay, let's test that out in some of these trees here. Putting it into some of the deciduous trees. Okay. Here's a brown. Add that in there. Kind of give a little bit of variation to your tree, too. Don't color in the whole thing. Color in parts of it. That way you'll have kind of this oscillation of light and dark that's happening within it. Here's a yellow, just more of pure yellow. Okay. You can put some of it on the grass as well. If, uh, as if some leaves were falling onto that grass. Okay, camel. It's kind of a brownish tinge, tone. Yeah, maybe not too much of that one. You can always kind of test these things out. Like I said there, when you start off kind of light like this, there's really a lot of, uh, oh, kind of a, uh, There's a wide open kind of tolerance to um, experimentation. You can put it wherever you want. 
And if you don't like it, you can kind of get the gist of what something's going to look like with a pale version of it. And if you like it, then you can always go more. That's why I always kind of like taking things kind of, uh, you know, little incremental steps, okay? Coloring the side of that cabin. I mean, uh, not cabin, but chapel. I like making um, the different planes and volumes of the um, structures different values so that um, they look like they're a little bit more three-dimensional um, light hits the um, different sides of uh, structures in a different way just like you know this stamp right here there's different values of it on each side right so if you make one a little bit darker lighter uh, varied or whatever somewhere in between you can get more variation out of it and things look a little bit more three-dimensional on a two-dimensional surface, you know, which is what we're working with. Okay, so we have something like that. I, I can get a little bit more oranges or something like that in here, tones like that. Uh, but I think I'll stop right there. I won't go too extreme as I have in the past. I just wanted this to be more of an experiment video, just testing out the possibility as I've done a complete scene in here, because I couldn't help it, but um, two complete scenes, because I wanted to test things out. I know that that paper is working just the same way it did on that kind of more 20-year-old prints that I found earlier, and I know that this will take my pigment ink just fine. If it doesn't, I'm going to be shocked. I have a Q-tip here. Uh, boy, I need to stock up on some cotton balls. I don't see my cotton ball. I see one. Okay, so this is really where a lot of fun comes into play, okay? I love kind of light, wispy textures when this, within a scene, and we get that in the clouds inherently in the photographs, this kind of wispy look, right? And that's what I'm going for with pigmenting, so that these types of textures are inherently in the serve, you know, the um, photos kind of gives me a head start when I start doing this type of process right here, so I'm blotting off some of this ink right here. This pad really got dry when I went out to Arizona, which is kind of good because it's not so juicy. I don't want all my pads drying out, but um, it actually helps in this way. But um, I'm going in and toning out some of my impressions, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm going in and introducing light to this given area and objects, okay? And I oscillate things. I have some on certain areas. And I leave other areas alone so it doesn't look like that light from those sky is hitting that object right there. I could tone out a lot of it, but like I said, I like to oscillate it, you know, so that there's um, some variation in here, okay? And I think, anyways, but what this does to me is it takes that really soft light of those clouds and it introduces that light into the objects, bringing kind of continuity of lighting into the piece. And I think it just adds this kind of soft look to the overall composition. So here we, here we have this vapor in the sky in the form of the clouds, okay? And I'm adding some of that same vapor, okay, down here. So it's the same substance as in the background as in the foreground like that. And when you do things like that, you bring kind of an overall kind of harmony and continuity to the uh, scene. It's a, it's a common texture. You have it in the background, now you have it in the foreground like this, okay? And I'm not adding a big slathering to this. You, if you have a really ju super juicy pad, which most of our um, pigment ink pads are, because we don't use, a lot of us don't use them too much, you know, people use them for embossing and whatnot. 
but so you have to kind of blot off some of this before you take it on your real thin applications, okay? Okay, now one of the things I started doing last time was um, I started bringing this into some of my clouds too to make some of my clouds seem a little bit lighter in areas. And I think that adds to a nice, or it makes for a nice addition, even in the sky itself. Sometimes it's a little bit of a different color white, you know. See so right in here, there's a little bit of a warmth to some of that um, cloud. Now I can kind of give it a little bit more dimension. And this is kind of like a paint, you know, pigment ink is almost like a paint. So if you have that texture up here and down here, it kind of makes a little bit more sense in terms of that common texturing. common temperature too, you know, this is kind of more of a neutral white, and adding it over. In this one, it happens to be a little bit of a warmer light. There's a little bit of yellow to those clouds in the photograph back up there, but here, I'll, let me show you what I'm doing right here. See that right up there? It's a little bit of a different white, but when you do that, it's starting to give that nice continuity to it. Put some of this in those trees like this. A little bit of this mist, kind of building up like so. It's kind of like a morning type of scene, morning at the chapel, early morning, where there's still kind of that fog, low-lying fog on the ground. Just back here and kind of backlighting uh, the piece a little bit. If you've watched these videos, I sometimes I take um, a couple pieces of paper and I do like a, a lighting streak across, you know, a light beam going across something. You can do something like that in the uh, the piece. Or coming out, a flare up there would be kind of interesting, especially with a chapel like that. You know, this heavenly kind of backlighting. But anyways, that's really fun to do. Okay, let's add some of it on this one right here, okay? Let's add some of it up here in the sky like this. Kind of diffuse the edge of that cloud a little bit if we want to. Mm, it looks fine as is too. But kind of adding that little bit of texture will give a little bit of a, more of a relationship with what I do down here, okay? So let's take a look at these trees, okay? See some more distant trees, maybe I can kind of put them in a little bit of a diffused light fog, okay? It looks, it makes them look a little bit more distant, right? Like so. See that? Just let it look like some are a little bit closer, some are a little bit farther away. Now I don't want to do this so much over here because it's dark. Okay, I'm kind of putting it where light meets dark. And I think that's typically the most effective areas for something like that. But anyways, we're just varying things. See this right down here where there's a little bit of light down here in the water because of those reflective, well, what ended up being reflections of the clouds because of placement. See that right there? See how that kind of varies that um, edge. Sorry. Edge of that thing. See how crisp it is here, but look at that right there. It, it makes that area softer, but look at this little shadow here too, the reflections. See that right there? Maybe the more distant it gets, the lighter it becomes. And I'm putting, applying very thin layers. And this is really easy to apply on here. It really transfers over beautifully. If you don't like it, then you just kind of tap it off with your finger and mop off some of it, okay? So it's not as if this is going on with a real permanent type of feel. You can kind of work it and move it around a little bit. I wouldn't let it set up overnight. I, I don't know how it'll, if it'll come off this. It comes off glossy paper, you know, really easy, but... On this, I'm not really quite sure. Oh, here. Uh, we have that up 
there like so up here in the clouds here why don't we diffuse some of this branch right here and put some of the lighting on the branch like so okay so we have this oscillation of kind of definition within the branch so there's a little bit of variety going on it was only stamped out in black right so it was just solid black but now we have this branch right here see there's just variations of gray within it just in this area where it kind of meets the uh, the white background I've put a little bit of uh, pigment ink in there and suddenly we have that lighting influencing our black impression I mean this is a super easy thing to do and you know just a few little taps like that and it can be very very effective in kind of the extension of your entire textural um, range within a piece okay you add this in there and it makes the images or parts of the images maybe you know more accurately softer looking so from a textural standpoint and feel visual feel it really adds a lot of character or can add a lot of character all right so here we have those kind of softer looks in here you see where i put it across some of these trees like right in here you can see it right down here too that's even in a pretty dark area but it changes uh, things around it could be in a very subtle way but nevertheless I think people kind of feel that when looking at it so um, it appeals to um, kind of the different senses you know um, texture people love soft textures they love picking things up and holding the puppy or a cat you know kitten or something like that or you, you look at you walk through you know Costco and there's this super super plush you know soft throw rug, you know blanket or something like that people want to touch it so soft things within scenes or stamping can be really nice too it just it's creates this kind of appeal to it all right so anyways happy to see a good way to go about you know stamping some different scenes out in achieving some different looks and working around um, different types of backgrounds it's a pretty good exercise of working with you know your medium in terms of the uh, existing backgrounds and what different types of imagery you can use over the top of them the more kind of solid and bold they are the more varied your backgrounds could be with you know high contrast and what but if you have kind of open areas like this I don't know if I would have a you know a sky with a cloud with a hard you know blue and white area going right through my chapel I don't know it might work I'm, I'm not sure you know there are certain things you can do but um, I don't know it's kind of fun fun to work around the parameters by which you are given you know with a certain uh in this case cloudy background so anyways hope you enjoyed this video um like i said the Flickr once again uh address is below in the uh the the this, uh, the note section below these videos just click on the show more or on certain tablets maybe it doesn't show more you just kind of click on this little area down here in the description and it'll expand that area and I have my Flickr address, and there is an album in that section called, uh, there's different albums I have too, and some are called just Clouds. And these ones are the more recent ones that I've added in there. But then there's this little download button that you can uh, click on it, and it'll download to your computer. And then you can upload them to uh, different things. I might offer these in packs or something like this at some point in time too, that people can do. Some people don't have, I don't know, access or don't want to hassle with it you know for a nominal price i'll have you know packs of uh cloud prints you know but i you know it's something that we can all do too and if you have a printer too a lot of us don't even have printers anymore but i would think that would work
So anyways, if you have any questions or comments or you give this a try, you know, uh, I don't know, let us know how it goes. And uh, thanks as always for tuning in to the Stampscapes channel.